Yes, people, wife and boy, and part two of the combined 11s this weekend is the North London derby. What a massive game for myself as an Arsenal fan and for you lot watching. So today I'm going to do my combined 11 and I'm going to be as unbiased as I possibly can be an Arsenal fan. Let me know your combined 11 in the comment section down below as well as your score predictions for the match. And if you're new around here, make sure you subscribe on my road to 2000 subscribers. So I'm going to do this mostly based off form, but not completely based off form, if you get me. Formation 4-3-3, let's get into it. In goal, I am going to go for Aaron Ramsdale. Hugo Lloris, has he got more experience than Ramsdale? Yes. Has he been in more big games than Ramsdale? Yes. But Hugo Lloris has got a blunder in him. Hugo Butterfingers, that's what I call him. He's just always waiting for a mistake with this guy. I think with the ball at his feet, he needs massive improvements, to be honest. And Ramsdale this season, he's been top. There hasn't been one performance where I can really say, oh, Ramsdale let us down. He's been superb at times this season and he definitely deserves to be in the combined 11 for me. Right back, I think also shouldn't really be a debate. It should be Ben White. People have spent their whole time saying, oh, he's not right back. Oh, he's not right back. Well, how's he performing like one of the best right backs in the Premier League then? He is. It's just a system Arteta plays. He likes to play a fullback that is more of a defensive-minded fullback. And then the other fullback is more of a midfield-minded fullback. It's what Pep Guardiola has done for years. He's now playing Ake at left back, for example just like Ben White at right back for Arsenal. And he's been absolutely solid in that position. He deserves to be there. Jed Spence can't get a look in. Emerson Royale, we know he is dead food. And Doherty's here and there. Shouldn't really be a debate. The centre-backs now. Now, this is tough for me because I do believe someone from Tottenham, Christian Romero, deserves to be in this 11. So he is going to go in there. Who's next to him? For me, I'm going to go with William Saliba. There's a shout for Gabriel. And I think consistency-wise, Gabriel's actually been better than Saliba. But the thing is, Gabriel's had notable mistakes in him that Saliba has not made. For example, the pet, uh, when he got robbed by Mitrovic uh, in the Fulham goal, Gabriel, that was his fault. Almost cost us a game versus Leeds, where he kicked out at Bamford. So yeah, I'm going to put Saliba in there, especially because before the World Cup, I actually do believe that Saliba, Lisandro Martinez and Botman were the three best centre-backs in this Premier League. So for me, Saliba and Romero are the two centre-backs. Left-back as well should not be a debate. It should be Zinchenko. Perisic, he doesn't really play in a back four, let's be honest. Sessegnon hasn't really been consistent enough. Zinchenko hasn't really been fit, but when he's been in that team, he's been solid. He's got the best win percentage in the Premier League history. He deserves to be in there. Let's move into midfield now because this is where maybe some debates could happen. For me though, you can call it controversial. Controversial. My two centre mids, well the two, like the six and the eight, Thomas Partey and Granit Xhaka. Starting with Thomas Partey, he has to be in everyone's combined 11. Arguably one of the best CDMs in the Premier League this season. I call him the octopus man. He retrieves every ball, slide tackling, wins it back for our first goal versus Brighton. Breaks up the plays, forward passes between the lines. He's absolutely solid this season. He's taken it to a new gear. And the fact he's staying fit is so massive for Arsenal Football Club. Having Jacqueline, I can't lie. If you put Benton Court in... I, I wouldn't mind that. I think Benton Core deserves it alongside Xhaka, but I'm just putting Xhaka in because of the role he's played for Arsenal going forward and the fact he's contributed and had consistent performances week in, week out. Benton Core alike, he has done so. I've watched a lot of Tottenham games this season and arguably he's been one of the more standout players for Spurs and the struggling side. But Xhaka for me is just taking it to a brand new level this season, especially from how I saw him before when he was, let's be honest, one of the worst performers at Arsenal week in, week out. He stepped it up a gear. He's got a new position further forward. He's contributing with goals and assists. And he's been strong in that midfield as well. I see this Arsenal team and the Arsenal midfield, especially with Partey and Xhaka, like two workhorses, man, that are technically brilliant, but also not afraid to put in a challenge, put their body about and win the ball. It's powerful, powerful midfield. And it's reminiscent, to be honest, of like the earlier Arsenal teams under Arsene Wenger. At Cam, there should be no debate. I don't care I've got Partey and Xhaka already in midfield. Cam has to be Martin Erdgaard. This man's been one of the best centre-attacking midfielders in the world. Arguably one of the best players in the Premier League this season. He's contributing with goals and assists and taking the play for Arsenal. Everything that goes through Arsenal Football Club goes through Martin Erdgaard. He's got a part to play in pretty much everything. Let's be completely honest. He's there. He's in and around the team and he's making things happen. That assist to Martinelli on our fourth goal versus Brighton just summed it up. What a pass. Tottenham have got no one like Erdegaard in that team that can play that attacking role, that cam role. Only really Harry Kane's most and they prefer him up front. So yeah, Martin Erdegaard 100% gets in at cam. Let's move into the front three because I think when I did, if I would have done this uh, combined 11 when they went to the Emirates, it might be a different story. But right now, I think right wing, Bukayo Saka. He's been one of the best wingers in the Premier League this season. I'm a massive fan of Kulusevski. I think he's an unbelievable player and I'm so annoyed we didn't stand up last January when we were looking for Kulusevski. 
but he just hasn't been fit enough this season. He's missed too many games. But other than that, I think he's been really solid. And I think if a full fit Kulisevsky for the whole season and a full fit Saka, I think he's heads or tails which one you pick, to be honest. But I am going to give the benefit of the doubt for Saka. He's contributed in most games for Arsenal, scoring important goals, important penalties as well. And he deserves it. He's been one of the standout right wing performers in this Premier League. Left wing, it's got to be Martinelli. I'm a massive fan of Hung Min Son as well, but he has just not been firing this season. I don't know what it is. He just cannot hit the ground running whatsoever. He's got against Palace in Tottenham's last game, Selhurst so Park last Premier League game. But other than that, here and there, I know he's got a hat trick early in the season at, at Tottenham Stadium, but just has not been performing on a regular enough basis. On the other hand, Martinelli played most games, performed well most games, chipping in with goals in multiple matches and important goals as well. I'm talking about the first goal to kick, kick us off against Nottingham Forest. The fourth goal against Brighton Hove Albion. The goal to take the lead against West Ham United. This man is scoring on a consistent basis and deserves to be in this side. And up front, there's no debate, it's Harry Kane. I think even if Gabriel Jesus was fully fit this whole season, it would still have to be Harry Kane. This man deserves it. I think he's carrying Tottenham at times this season. Himself, Bentoncourt and Romero have been Spurs' best players this season by a country mile. And he 100% deserves to be in this side. I think if Haaland wasn't performing the way he was... Kane would still be talked about as the best Premier League striker there is. So yeah, that is my combined 11 running through it. Again, we've got Ramsdale, Ben White, Saliba, Romero, Zinchenko. We've then got Partey, Xhaka, Erdegaard, Saka, Martinelli and Harry Kane. Only two Tottenham players in there. I said I was going to be unbiased. This is my unbiased opinion. But to be fair, I wouldn't mind if you put Bentonco instead of Xhaka. But even then, there'd only be three Spurs players to Arsenal eight. I'm saying it as it is. Arsenal top of the league. Spurs are only fifth slash six. It's the way the cookie's crumbling right now, man. Like, Spurs cannot string to get any, any good performances. I think Arsenal, this team, people are still underrating us. I think if Arsenal, by May, they will start to rate this team. But I'm seeing it right now. Like, how it's developing is looking good. Like, people probably still look at the FIFA ratings when Arsenal players still got, like, 80, 81 or 82. When they update it for the next FIFA, I think it's FIFA 24. I don't even play FIFA. <laughs> but whatever that one. And you see the Arsenal players start to have ratings of, like, 85, 86. Then they'll start to rate this Arsenal team. This Arsenal team is looking good. I'm Honestly, I could have put all of them in this combined 11. They've been that good this season. They've been performing to their absolute top ability. But there's certain players that Tottenham have, the match winners, like the Harry Canes in there, that can get them a result. And that is why, despite the fact that Arsenal on top form, going to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium for this North London derby it is never an easy game. That's why I'm not sitting there like it's a foregone conclusion we're going to win this match. I'm hoping for a win. And to be honest, I think it's the best chance we're going to get to beat Tottenham Hotspur in recent seasons. But it's definitely not a nailed on three points for Arsenal. Spurs could easily turn up and get a result here. But in terms of my score prediction, I'm going to go for a draw. I'm going to go for a 2-2 draw between Arsenal and Tottenham. Honours even. Would I take a draw? No. I think I would have taken a draw if Arsenal got three points against Newcastle. But given we drew to Newcastle, we need the bounce back. So I do want us to beat Tottenham at their stadium, given it probably is our best chance in recent years. Let me know your score predictions in the comment section down below, as well as your combined 11. Do you agree with me or do you have someone else in there? I've been Y Football, and I hope to see you all in my next video.